Hey, Heather McKay here. Today I'm just going to show you a real quick trick on how to switch album sizes. So recently I had a client who decided not to upgrade their album from 11 by 14, which is what we originally designed it, and now they want to go to a 10 by 10 square album. So we've already done the design, we've already done the pictures, and what do you do? So in smart albums, it actually makes it fairly easy to do this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have to open the old design. All right, and now it's loaded. It's loaded my design that I've already done, the client has already approved. And so what we wanna do now is change, take this exact same design since we've already gone through the approval process and we wanna change the size. You know, and the other the other time this happens, this happens a lot also when you maybe pre-design your albums for your couples and then they choose something else. So it's a very common to need to do a new book uh, from the same design. So it's a real simple process. All you have to do is you wanna click on the first photo and then do command A for select all, or if you're on a PC, whatever the equivalent is for select all. So what it does is it selects all the images and it actually selects all your layouts. And that's what the whole point of this video and that's what's important. So we're gonna do select all, you're gonna copy, so command C on a Mac. And what we wanna do is now change it to a new different sized wedding album, okay? So what we're gonna do is do new project, and this is where you're gonna choose the other company that you wanna use, whatever company you're using. So they're going to a 10 by 10. You can change a different type of uh, whatever album they're doing. And I love uh, Smart Albums um, by Pixaloo because this wedding album design software has every basically every wedding album company that you can imagine is pre-filled in as far as their templates. So designing a wedding album is so easy with this software. Okay, and then we're just gonna start a new project. I always name my projects the size, the company I chose, and then the last name or the couple's name. And that way, if again, if they don't come back to order it after a long time, I might forget who, which company I chose to design it. Especially, like I said, if you're doing pre-designs for your wedding albums, um, then this is a great way to enable to enable <laughs> to label your wedding album uh, files. Is uh, so I always do the size, the company, and the and the client's name. So we want to just do a new uh, album. So this is just telling me the Bay Photo Lab. It starts on a single side. I already know that. And now all we have to do is paste. So Command V, and it's going to change it to the square format for me. The nice thing about doing it this way, the easiest way to Obviously, this is the easiest way to do it, is to copy the images from the old one, put them into the new one. One thing that's great is it's gonna put them all in order like we already designed it. So for this particular customer, when they're changing the size on me, this is great. We've already approved the design, we've already approved those photos, we already have the story told. So all I have to do is rearrange my layouts to make more sense for a square album. And with a smaller album, I'm gonna take out some images as well. But the nice thing is they're all in chronological order in the way we want them. So it's actually a pretty easy, not, I mean, it's not always super easy to do a redesign this way, but uh, it'll, it gives me like most of the hard work is done. The drawback to doing it this way, if you did a pre-design and then they changed everything on you, is that you're not gonna have all of the photos available. It just imports in the photos that you've already put in that design. So if you have more photos from their wedding day and you're designing a wedding album with them and they've changed, they haven't changed the mind, you pre-designed it and they're now going through the process with you with a different size, then you'll wanna import in all the images. That's just something to keep in mind. So, you know, honestly, I just start with the pages that I know are good to go. Like we know we want this photo. So all I need to do on this page is figure out which layout I want for the last page. And I always do full bleed when I can. So that's how you do copy paste to change your album size using Pixaloo's smart albums. You just do a copy paste, you copy all the photos and it pastes it. And like I said, it goes all in chronological order, which is awesome. And it's already for this particular one, we'd already approved the image choices. So it's just a matter of making it look better for the square size. That is how you do a different sized album using smart albums. If you, uh, have any more questions on this particular software just leave me a comment below and I'm happy to do more tutorials I usually just do tutorials on weird things um, that you you know you google them because you're like how do I do that I know you can do it so if you want a more advanced tutorial just let me know in the comments below and um, the other thing is 
it, this video is sponsored by my referral links. So I don't have a referral links for smart albums, but I do have an affiliate or referral link down below for all the other software that I use, or most of the other software I use, like Shoot Proof and things like that. So I'd love it if you help support the channel by using my links. Um, and that's it. Take it easy. Bye.